Thanks, Sophie. You're watching Southeast Today. Our top story tonight. The father whose young children were left stranded on a rail platform after the driver refused to reopen the doors. And pernicious potholes. Motoring organisations say the state of our roads is costing users thousands. Hello, a father from Hastings has spoken of his panic and anger after he was left locked on a train with his young children stranded unaccompanied on the platform. Ben Newman was heading home from a holiday with his two boys aged six and four when they attempted to change trains at Hampden Park in Eastbourne. But Ben, struggling with the luggage, couldn't get off the train in time. Despite his protestations and rising panic, the train staff refused to reopen the doors and it moved off leaving the children behind. Piers Hopkirk takes up the story. Back home with his boys after a moment any passenger or parent would dread. Ben and his children had been returning from the south of France when they tried to change trains. We gathered up all of our stuff in, into the bags and I went to move the suitcase and the children walk ahead of me. And just as they're going ahead and I'm leaving the train with them, my suitcase gets stuck and I have this sense of panic to get the suitcase free. And as I get it free, I hear the beeping in the doors turn around and the children uh, stood on the platform just as the doors close. It happened here at Hampden Park Station in Eastbourne. Ben hit the emergency alarm and summoned a member of onboard staff. They spoke to the driver, but to Ben's horror, the train pulled away. I couldn't believe it. I was really frantic. I almost went feral on the train. I was shouting and swearing, like, just let me off the train. My kids are right there. Uh, and, that was, uh, and other passengers around were shouting and screaming and shocked as well. And as the train left, I saw my eldest like howl out. I screamed, another member of the public screamed as well. Uh, just it was sort of utter disbelief that that had happened. It felt like something so easily avoided. The anxiety felt by his boys was clear. A bit annoyed, um, maybe scared and Worried. Fortunately, a woman standing on the platform had seen the situation unfold and realising that the boys had been separated from their father, stayed with them to make sure they were safe. Ben, meanwhile, was stuck on the train to travel the three or so miles to Eastbourne, where he explained the situation and a member of staff drove him back to be reunited with his boys. Ben says the fact the train drove off despite his protestations raises serious questions about passenger safety. This idea of cutting back on staff and staffless stations really fills me with a, sen a sense of, of unease um, because in this scenario it was the, the, the driver got to make the decision about the emergency when he's several carriages away. Govia Thameslink told us, we understand the great distress this would have caused Mr Newman and send our heartfelt apologies for what happened. We take this matter very seriously and the incident is under review. As he seeks to restore his family's confidence in train travel, Ben Newman says the lessons must be learned. <laughs> Piers Hopkirk, BBC South East Today. The boss of Ryanair has called for the head of National Air Traffic Services to resign tonight after delays at Gatwick Airport due to staff absences. A Gatwick spokesperson confirmed that temporary air traffic control restrictions are in place and they have apologised to any passengers who are impacted by flight delays or cancellations. A statement from Nats said they have recruited more air traffic controllers and are trying to keep disruption to a minimum. Travellers are being advised to contact their airline for more information. The state of our roads is causing accidents, damage to cars and costing vehicle owners thousands of pounds, according to motoring organisations. Kent Council has missed its targets for repairing potholes this year, despite saying it has invested millions and brought in extra contractors. And in East Sussex, this was filmed by a resident near Pilttown this week. East Sussex County Council says temporary traffic lights have now been put up to make it safe. And the central government makes money available to councils to bid for, to fill in potholes, isn't getting to the root cause of the problem. The issue is the state of our roads is poor anyway. And if we can't bring them up to a decent standard and then look after them, potholes are always going to appear. So it really is a bit of a case of kind of throwing kind of 
good money after bad, really. You know, we really need to kind of get out of this cycle, rethink the way we actually fund our roads and our council roads in particular in this country to give councils themselves much more certainty of funding over a longer term period. A Roman statue has been discovered in Kent. The find depicts the Roman sea god Triton. It was found near Tenham as part of investigations for a new housing development. Archaeologists have also found the remains of a mausoleum. A Kent police officer has been sacked for the way he treated a victim of rape. PC Evan Potter sent a series of messages, including one where he pretended to be the rapist and encouraged the victim to relive her experience. He's been banned from working for the police again. Zookeepers at Drusilla's Park have never witnessed the birth of a baby sloth, but one lucky visitor managed to capture the incredibly rare moment on film. Helena, the mother sloth, is seen here at the Sussex Park giving birth and then moments afterwards showing him off to the world. Time now for a look at the weather with John Hammond. Thanks very much. Very good evening. Well, there's some more warm sunshine to look forward to over the next couple of days. But uh, briefly, just first thing in the morning, it'll feel quite uh, chilly out there, particularly in rural areas. Temperatures down to single figures and a few fog patches, which might take a, a couple of hours to clear, but they will do. The sun will burst through and then we'll settle into another glorious early autumn day. A little bit of fair weather cloud, but a lot of blue sky and temperatures, if anything, higher than they were today. So up into the low, possibly mid-20s, the highest values inland. The wind's pretty light. Looking further ahead into Saturday, a bit more cloud around, but bar the odd shower, it should stay dry. And again, every bit as warm. The outlook, though, sees a big change later on this weekend with some heavy thunderstorms developing. That's it from us for this evening. Bye-bye.